it's Chase from On The Table Gaming, and today we're looking at the followers of Bone for the free folk in the A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. All right, so here we have the follower of Bones, the latest unit out for the free folk for A Song of Ice and Fire the miniatures game, and I'm so excited to see what's in the box. So you got your standard shredder movement tray, nothing really fancy about this, uh, with a logo on the bottom. We've got the unit cards that come in the little Little Ziploc bag here. Movement of five, bone weapons, three plus to hit, eight, five, three, armor of five plus, morale of seven plus, and horrific visage. Each time an enemy targets this unit with a melee attack, the enemy suffers a panic test before resolving that attack. That's gonna be awesome to have. It's gonna help uh, against especially cheaper units, which maybe we'll be facing as the free folk. We also have the champion of bone. Each time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, this unit may restore for two wounds. So that'll be nice as we start to build out some free folk panic lists, giving them a little bit more attrition value. Although typically that's not something we play into at this point for the free folk, but I'm excited to see what possibilities this has down the line. And then let's get into the actual units. Oh man, I'm excited. So here's our first, here's our first unit. You know what occurs to me? It's always really hard to get these in focus. So rather than showing me taking them out of the box and putting them to the camera, here's just what the miniatures look like. Now these miniatures are awesome, and in the book, it's a little bit harder to find specific references to them. Now in the books, the Lord of Bones is going to be wearing elk bones, goats, mammoths, there's even some human bones in there, and so it's clear that the follower of bones sort of adorn themselves in a similar fashion as you might expect. Now they're following their leader, the Lord of Bones, sometimes referred to mockingly as Rattleshirt, and I think what's interesting is that this unit here is going to open up a lot of potential and combinations for the Free Folk forces. Now, that being said, I really do think until the Free Folk Hero Box 1 is available for the general public, particularly units like the Lord of Bones, although they also really synergize well with Steer, the Magnar of Fen, um, I think once the Hero Box is out, this unit is going to be definitely way more effective. So now's the time to get your practice and playing with them on the table. You know, when the hero box is out, they are definitely going to be a lot better. Now the center of this list is the Bone Lord's Chosen with Rattleshirt leading as a commander. His order, First Claim, will help get additional tactics cards out of your deck and onto the unit. Gruesome Reminders, Mark of Slaughter, Jagged Trophies, these can all make this unit a veritable killing machine. So we're going to follow this unit up with two more units of Follower of Bones, one with Weeper, Cruel Tyrant, as an attachment, and then one with no attachment. Now, Weeper's order will help push out more damage from Fearsome Visage, and its long range will help you apply the effect where needed. And you're really trying to get areas where you can push down and take a rank off of your opponent so you can trigger Rattleshirt, the Bone Lord, so you can trigger Rattleshirt's tactics cards. All right, then we're going to add in a unit of Cave Dweller Savages for their versatility and their finishing potential. These guys coming in and wiping out units is excellent, and they can also help you trigger your tactics cards as well. And then we got two units of Free Folk Raiders. They're going to be our speed bumps, getting in the way, clogging things up, using gang up where necessary. We got a unit of Free Folk Trappers. They're going to be pushing out that damage with their traps. And a single non-combat unit miniature, Styre, the Iron-Fisted Tyrant. So we're taking Styre as an NCU because the dream scenario is to get the melee attack zone on the tactics board and then attack in a later round. So in that one round, you can do 2d3 wounds with his ability as an influence, and then you only take d3 hits. But it's also important to note it was clarified by the developer that you can in fact put Styre on your opponent's units to just have them take d3 hits when it's removed. Just make sure that unit isn't able to get into combat and deal the D3 wounds to you. So let me know how this list works out for you. I've been experimenting a lot with these one NCU lists. Let me know in the comments below how this list works out for you. And until next time, I hope you get your miniatures on the table.